everyone, welcome to Rana's Radar. Circle your wagons is what's happening, and that's what's on the channel Ralph for this Ritchie weekend. Is here, and Ralph is, is 60. Before so we get into the interviews, one of the things that I love about this is the family friendly Ralph atmosphere and the events that happen. As you can hear, his friend, and I'm using air quotes when I say friend, Mike stole his car and brought it to the show. He didn't know his That's car was going to be here. So, <laughs> so Ralph, we're celebrating happy a birthday, birthday to you, turning 60 years young. And we also found out that a guy here, Larry, is turning 70 today as well. And Larry, if you're within the sound of our voice, come on by and get a piece of cake because we're going to sing happy birthday to uh, Ralph Ritchie. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to queue it up over here on the sound system. So here we go. Here we go. This is going to be pretty cool. We're going to go over there and I want to see some of the family. Where is the car that got stolen? That's <laughs> it. We'll give Ralph a moment to be with his family and then we'll get him on camera to tell us about this awesome little Give him a hand, everybody. 60 years ago, Ralph. And where is 70 years ago? We saw the 62 bug in action earlier. Love that engine sound. I mean, it just it took me right back to last week at the LS Fest. <laughs> I thought I was back at the drag strip or at the burnout pit, but no, I was here with Curtis's bug. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. You had quite a crowd here earlier. Yes. Yeah. Everybody was gathered around, and why wouldn't they be? That sounded beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, what have you got here? That's a 1962 sliding rag top car. Um, it's done by Cooks V Dubs out of Maryland. Uh, they did the paint, every, all the work on the car. It's got a Dave K. Well power plant, uh, 2276, turbocharged, obviously. Turbocharged, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. I just got off the dyno two weeks ago from Dave. Okay. Uh, we made 490 horse on 25 pounds. Wow, with, wow, uh, that is saying a lot, Curtis. Now, when we hear that engine, we don't exactly imagine a bug making all that sound right. right that's why i had to come to you i mean when you hear that engine you think of a truck you know you think of something but not a volkswagen yeah so tell me about that what were you planning to do that and why where did um, that inspire inspiration come from you're talking about just to start the car yeah you know, so many people ask you know and I, people talk about the sound and what does it sound like and ask how much power it makes and well i just figured i would start it up and yep. make some noise for them but why did you want to make that much noise with a volkswagen why yes uh, why <laughs> well you know uh, dave k well said it best he said if you got a badass ride it should sound like it's a badass <laughs> exactly exactly if you're gonna have a hot rod it's gonna sound like a hot rod that's correct right? yes okay absolutely love this loving the color as well we've got the fuel tank here at the front the gas tank, I should say. Now, when you've got an engine like that, that's turbocharged, and it's making, what did you say, over 400 horsepower? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. For a small body, that is a lot of horsepower. It is. That's a lot. You've got to have your row cage and safety in. That's great. Let's have a look inside, and sure. then you can tell me about the gauges. Okay, sure. Um, it's got a cage, crawl chrome molly, uh, you know, speedometer, tack, oil pressure, boost. Uh, oil temp we keep it pretty simple um nothing too extravagant in here um it's just a driver car and you know what they say just keep it simple would you like to race this uh sure <laughs> sure why not <laughs> yeah, why not? 
And the top here, you called it a drag and slide? Or? It's, a it's a slide and rag top. A slide and rag top. Yep, slide and okay. rag top, yes, ma'am. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the Volkswagen's having such a small engines originally. Mm -hmm. The space is small. Mm -hmm. Let's show everybody what you've got done here and then. Does this ever close or no? No, it, it stays just like this. It has to stay open, yes. of course. It stays like this. Um, 2276, like I said, Dave Kaywell power plant, uh, LS1 valve springs, uh, H beam rods, Wiseco pistons, uh, ported heads by Dave Kaywell, uh, Holly 600 uh, carburetor, turbo, you know, TO4B. Um, that's really that's really about it. It's got a uh, Sean Dowdle uh, trans in. It's got a Quaif LSD. Uh, it's on QA1 double adjustables, limiter straps, heim jointed. Uh, there's a brace on the back of the motor that goes up to the firewall, ties it into the roll cage. Mm -hmm. um, How is this, this small body able to sustain so much power? Oh, uh, it's it's fully built. It's so, fully built. Yeah, yeah. That's what, you know, it's all aftermarket aluminum case, you know, aftermarket crank rods, pistons. What about uh, the heads. weight? The 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 weight. Uh, it weighs 1,683 pounds. Okay, and managing the weight of the engine, being here in the back, mm -hmm. is there any kind of balance that's been happened or changes to the chassis to make that work? Or uh, it's just got a tranny raise in it. Okay. Uh, like I said, and everything's all heim jointed. Uh, you know, it's it just it's just set up to run. It's basically. Set up to run. Mm -hmm. wow. Yep. Let's awesome. See Awesome. I had to come and ask you. Yeah, yeah. I had to come and ask you. You had the whole crowd here before. It sounded brilliant. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And yes. you're going to race this. I drive it more on the street than you I do race. <laughs> <laughs> Racing the tears them up. I try to keep it nice, but you know. Fair enough. We, we, we will make some track passes here and there. Yep. And give it to the people and give them a show. Yes, yes. That's, that's it. That's correct. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, yes, Curtis. Yes, ma'am. We're going to start off at the campgrounds because these guys look awesome. I love the wood fire. I can smell it all. Hi there. How's it going? Good. I'm Rana. Rick Bradshaw. Rick, nice to meet you. Rick, what have you got here? I love the setup that's happening. You've got your friends here. Everybody's camped out. We've been together. Most of our group's been together 20 years, and we camp about once a month from the starts in April when we go to Florida and our buses. We go here twice a year, we go to Maggie Valley, we go to Grandfather Mountain, and we end up in November, we camp like at a uh, campground down in South Carolina. We just go camping about once a month, enjoying each other and enjoy the Volkswagen. And this must be your favorite campsite. It is. We're here at this spot every year. There you go. And why wouldn't it be? I'm going to show you guys the river as well. Why don't we come, let's take a walk around, and then we're going to get into your camper and see what you've got. But look at all this set up here, everybody. Yeah, we do our own setup. We do our own cooking. Is it your own cooking as well, completely camp style? Hey. <laughs> How could this not be your favorite, right? Yes. Look at this. That's what I tell. I can I can lay on my bed and look right out of the water. Wow. River, beautiful greenery, and then the campsite right here. Absolutely awesome. Rick, what have you got with you? Tell me about your camper. 1975 VW bus, West Folly. Okay. My son had it for when he was in school at Boone, and then he decided he didn't want it no more, and I wanted to go camping with the guys because I used to use a tent. So I gave him a Passat and took the bus and tore it apart and redone it and made me put it back original, but made me campers to go camping in, and I've been camping the same for 15 years. Okay, wow, you've given me so much information there now. 15 years ago, you got it from your son. Correct. And what was the state of it? And was it still a camper? It was still a camper, just like it is. All, this, all I took it apart and put it back new, just like it was. Okay, come, let's have a look here. The Volkswagen campers have got such a vintage look. Right. You just, from the wheel at the front here. <laughs> wow. All right, you've done a lot of work. Walk me through it. What did you do? I took everything out, replaced all the wood, fixed the wood in it, put all and ordered my material, put all the original plaid material back in it, along with the orange curtains. And this is all real wood in here, isn't it? Look yes, at that. it's all real. 
very nice. You've and then I took big bed. And and it's a fold-out bed at top, which is a full bed. You can get up in if you want to. Step up in. You need more light? No, this is good. Look at this. So you've got the bed here. There's a seat. And at the top here, someone else can sleep, but you're using yes. it for storage I right now. Storage. It flips over and it makes a full bed. And it makes a full bed. This bed down here now, it'll fold up and there's a, there'll be a full couch and then a table that pulls out. Okay, when the bed's not in use. And then under my jump seat, it's got a porta potty. There's a porta potty under that? Yeah. <laughs> and you I, know, took, I took this cabinet out to mount my TV here. And you got your TV. Yeah. You know how to camp, honestly. And one of the things is, it's pretty cool in here. Yeah, it stays real cool. It's, it's all, I insulated all the walls before I put the wood back in. Okay, but even with the coverings that you've done, the curtains, and then you've got the canvas there as well. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a humid day today, so it's nice and cool in here. Yeah, this made the new this the blackout curtains. Blackout curtains. To make it darker in yeah. here at night when you with a lot of light, and then it helps insulate it too. And you've got some LED lighting over here as well. Yeah, some we strips. Lighting around the top. Yep. Why the Volkswagens? I know they look cute as campers. Well, be take me with back you, to your it's, love. It's it's the people of Volkswagen. Okay. Uh, it don't matter if you show up in one that's completely redone, you show up in one that's like Swiss cheese. Everybody gets treated the same, everybody gets along, nobody argues, fusses. It's just, they're just good people. And I like being around good people. You, see, you put yourself around good people, you'll wind up being a good person. Nice, That's nice. the way I like it. I like that, that's why I'm liking the atmosphere here and that's why I am here today. To give everyone a variety and show a different environment, you know. Like I said, we were in Vegas last week and that was a lot of fun. But this is completely different and I'm loving it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> One of the other things that I like about the shows, and you all know this, is the auctions, the fundraising that happens and takes place. Now, sir, you've got something like that happening as well on September 9th. Correct. Tell me about that. It's in Shelby, North Carolina. It's called German Invasion. And we raise money there for cancer patients that don't have insurance, they need medication, whatever they need to get their shots or whatever it takes. We give them their cash that we make for the show. Our sponsors, which is on the back of our T-shirts. Stay there. German Invasion. Cleveland County Fairgrounds in North Carolina and that is happening on September 9th, the German invasion. Now tell us about... We will give, we, are, we raffle a car off okay. to raise money. Last year, like I said, we gave the money to a four-year-old girl with cancer patients. And we also wow. raffle off Kiwils is made out of, these are made out of t-shirts, uh, VW t-shirts. That is pretty neat. Oh, that is so cool. It's a queen size quilt to raffle off and help raise money for those people that we give money to. And what we do to make sure everybody knows we're legit is we take and call the people that get the money up to the front. They're there at the show before we give any plaques and trophies out. And we make sure we've got the cash all tally up and give them the money. And so it happens right there right live. There. I love that. So, That's what happened at the mini nuts, everybody. So the money just goes straight to the straight person. To the person. <laughs> straight to the person. How long have you been doing this for? This, this will be our 13th <laughs> show coming up this year. Wow. And what's the most you've ever raised at a show? Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> I know you've raised over 50000 Yeah, we've put over $50,000 total. So it's, it's, I don't know it in a separate show. Nice. We got to keep some money up. I'll, I just, I go out and get sponsors and yep. set to help set the show up. And then we got a guy that takes care of the money and gets all that together. Okay. And then we got all the, everybody to get joins in here. Well, everybody, take a look at the next um, few, few videos of my weekend here at Circle Your Wagons. And if you're into Volkswagens, then head over to North Carolina on September 9th. Right for German invasion and check them up real close. And if you want tickets, if you can get the phone number off of here. Okay, let's have a look. Call that number and we can get tickets sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so if you want tickets, just... That's all right. At 704-460-1895. Ask for Rick. Ask for Rick. That's me. There you go. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate it. No problems. Thank you. Uh -huh. Everybody, someone who's been involved with Circle Your Wagons for many decades. Yeah. At, Can at I say point. that? <laughs> yeah, almost three at this point. Jay, how are you today? Doing great. Great to have you with us, Rob. Good to be here. Good to be here. It's a great atmosphere. Very family friendly. And there is the man. Don't put him on camera. Don't behind camera. the show. <laughs> he can't be seen on camera. <laughs> we'll definitely try and get a chat with Omar <laughs> later on. 
great guy. So he's um, the big organizer, family run event. Yeah, he, I tell you, a guy has, has been, he can do anything mechanically with a vehicle from sheet metal work to paint to engine work. I mean, he's, he came by this the right way. He, we all used to go to him for our uh, work on our vehicles. He kept us all on the road. Nice, nice. And he spoke very well about you as well. Oh, he he's lying. <laughs> He never tells the truth. <laughs> well, he said that you know everything and everything there is to know about Circle Your Wagon. Well, I mean, we've all been here a part of these, all these years. We're Circle Your Wagon's 56, so it's, uh, wow. we, we've picked up a few things along the way. One of the great things about our shows, a lot of people love to return to this area. People in the tourism industry around this area will tell you about 60% of the people that visit come back and visit again and 100%. again and again. It happens a lot. So when you give people an opportunity to come out and share the things that they love, their cars, in a place that they love to visit, it's kind of a, a everybody can win sort of thing. And we've, we've certainly had a lot of success with our shows. And it is. It's such a great community of people that just love their vehicles and all the different things they do with them. I mean, here's a here's a Vanagon that's been converted into a sort of a motorhome. I've never even seen that one before. And there are more traditional buses everywhere and every paint scheme and color idea and setup you can imagine. We're going to have a look at the vehicles, the classics, the beautiful Volkswagens and the camper trailers real soon and we're going to chat with them but there you've got people camping out here. I can smell wood fire and I absolutely love it. You've got the river behind as well. It's such a beautiful scenery. It's a great location for a show. When we first came to the Sevier County Fairgrounds, we thought, wow, with this river and people, we all, several of us had camper buses and we thought, well, what a great place to come and have a show. And we pulled our campers up right along the river where people are pulled up right now and camped right there. And it just couldn't, when you walk around beside your camper to the other side and maybe had your van door open there it's almost like the show all goes away so wow. it's fantastic you gotta have a little privacy and then the show's all around you as well. and the show's all around you and what a show it is there is so many Volkswagens here the bug is here at the Sevierville Fair County Grounds is that the yeah. county fairgrounds. Yeah, Sevier County Fairgrounds, Old Knoxville Highway is where it's located. And we've been coming here so many times and you can see the campers just really line up along the riverside and the Beatles and the Bajas and the things and the water cools. We've got some great water cools now. We're still waiting to start to see some of the VW full electric show up. I don't know that we've seen one of those at any of our shows yet, but it's only gonna be a matter of time. It would be a matter of time. I mean, the way the things are moving forward and so many people love to customize and modify these. Yes. You know, we've got hot rods, we've got one that's turned into an absolute dragster, if you ask right, me. <laughs> right, right. So we'll have a chat with Curtis as well and get the story behind him. Now, tell me what's happening over the weekend. There is awards. Yeah, we do awards on Sunday and we do a top 75 show. We've done shows in the past where we had different classes, like 40 different classes. You know, you could have Restored Bug up to 1967 and then Restored Bug 68 and later. Mm -hmm. There's tons of classes you can do. And we did that for a while. Then we went to a top 75 show format where we just simply pick the top 75 cars and then best ups, best paint, best engine, best display I think is in there, best of show of course, best interior, several of those, promoter's choice. Uh, we do a couple of people's choice awards. We do a furthest distance traveled. We do uh, club participation and some fun games as well. An engine sound off, a stereo sound off. So a uh, Miss Circle Your Wagons. We had one uh, win that when it was six weeks old one time. So, six weeks old? Yeah. yeah. A six week old child's hard to beat in a beauty contest, I'll just tell you. That is so sweet. Now, Miss Circle Your Wagons, I love things like that. I love the pinup contest. So tell me about Miss Circle. When does that happen? Well, it happens on Sunday. It's the first of our awards that we okay. have. And it tends to be little girls. It's, uh, it's not, we're not talking bikini contest. No. Here. It's really okay. I would have no problem. But no, we've had a, a girl as young as six weeks win it. And we've had five-year-olds win, uh, all that sort of thing. But we meet the girls and find out where they're from and find out what their family car is, what Volkswagen is their favorite, that sort of thing. So we just talk with them and then the audience decides with their applause. So whoever has the biggest peanut gallery can maybe win. Oh, I love it's that. It's a lot of fun. I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm pretty excited. I want to check out so many of these guys. I want to chat with the people. Jay, it's 
been so fun and you tell me about what you do you're on the radio you had me on air before yeah we work uh, i work at the local radio station here in town and i just i had a, a volkswagen a bus years ago and needed it worked on met Hermel that way our show promoter and we started you know we got charter members of the club uh got the club started and when we started having shows it was just a natural progression because i had worked in entertainment before going to work in radio so i'd done a lot of work on microphones and that sort of thing and just kind of a natural fit so i've been the voice of our club since really the beginning have missed a couple of shows but not many out of 56 i think i've made maybe 54 of them wow so yeah it's been quite a quite a time hard to, hard to imagine after all this time that we've still been able to come together and do this They've got the right person behind the mic as far as the show goes. You know, you do your thing. You had me on air as well, so that was a lot of fun as well. But um, I'm going to go off and I'm going to start chatting with people there. Well, there's a lot of cars to see. Enjoy your There day. is a lot to see, and I'm here just for the day as well. So I'm going to be busy. We'll see it all on Raiders Radio, right? Okay. Take care. Take care. I always like seeing classic cars that were way ahead of its time and that's exactly what's happening here behind us. Stephen, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, how are you? Good, good. I love what you've got. Thank you. It's always going to draw attention and you know it. It does. It, it does. does. It's a favorite of the gas station. <laughs> there you go. What, what is it? Come over here and tell me. It is a 1979 Bradley GT2. Uh, it's by the Bradley Kit Car Company. They had great success with the first ones, the, the GTs, and they mass produced those with uh, plexiglass doors, plexiglass rear window. Uh, they had, Jay Leno had one in his garage, he was driving yes, around. Yes, we know just, that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I've always loved kit cars. It's hard to afford the real thing when it comes to uh, Ferrari, Lamborghini, mm -hmm. even the, uh, you know, the Back to the Future, Holy Grail, the DeLorean. Of so course. anything with the, uh, the funky doors, we love. We love. We love. So uh, the GT2, this is a 79. Did you build it? No, unfortunately, I was born in 77. So mm -hmm. I was only two when they got this car. Okay. So a uh, gentleman <laughs> uh, built this car with his father. They were uh, airline mechanics for Delta. Wow. So a lot of extra attention and detail in this car. I got very, very lucky to find one that was complete and uh, has all the options. It still has the air conditioning in it. Uh, the old eight, uh, not eight tracks, the set radio with the uh, antenna that comes up. It's electrically operated, electrically operated headlights. Everything works. Wow, so you haven't done anything to this car? I basically, spark plugs, oil change, fuel filters, Just flushed everything out. Yep. Yes. Luckily, this car has been sitting, uh, for lack of a better word, in storage for years for its okay. life. Uh, right now, the odometer is reading just over 2,100 miles. Nice. So that's, um, of course, the gauge would have been new. What the frame had on it previously, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they took great care in it. It's got braided fuel lines, braided uh, brake lines, sway bars front and rear, disc brakes up front. Uh, they put some extra blower motors on it. It's, it's, um, it's got a remote oil filter with a cooling system and electric fan on that as well. So they uh, they spent the extra time and effort. The, That's what the, it looks like. The car was purchased in 79, and then it was um, finished in 91. So it's 12 years build time. They've taken their time. They've taken their to time. Get everything right. There was no eBay. There was no. no internet. So I've got the original build sheets, the manuals and everything for this car See, from I the original did, I gentleman. didn't even know they were doing kit cars back then. Oh yeah. So when you mentioned that, I thought this is something you would have built like a lot more later on, like in the last 20 years or so. That's why I said right. if you had anything to do with it. No. But they were doing kit cars in 79. Absolutely, absolutely. There because, well, my GT1 is a 77. Okay. So, and then my, I've got a Laser 19 and it's an 81 from the best we can guess. Uh, the records get kind of funny even on the GT2s. Uh, there's not supposed to be a lot of them out there, but they yeah. are everywhere, mm -hmm. but they're not complete. This one is finished, perfectly finished with, uh, you know, a one-piece windshield that's not cracked in many pieces, which is the impossible part to find. It was specific just for these cars. Wow, we're going to get up close, and I want to have a look at those doors in action and have a look on the inside as well, because it looks pretty luxurious. But you've got another Bradley as well. I do, I do. I've got a GT1. It's yep. a silver with the uh, red interior and the doors were just plexi, just plexi floppy window doors. And uh, this car was the GT2. They, it has interior lights, it has real doors, it has real glass. This was the, uh, the first Bradley really got the name out there. It's probably one of the biggest names in kit cars. Right. 
and then the GC2 really uh, brought it home. But unfortunately, manufacturing, some uh, legal issues, Bradley was no longer probably by 83 or 84, they were done. They so, were done. And what is it about these that you love the most? The gold wing doors. Uh, because the, the wing doors. The wing doors, the wing doors. <laughs> the first one I ever bought was probably 20 or 25 years ago. Yeah. And I bought it out of a parking lot with no interior, no floor, no motor, but it had the gold wing doors it propped doors. up with a stick. There you go. And I was like, I want this car. I can yeah. fix this car. Well, 25 years ago, there's no eBay for the parts. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have the skill and the knowledge that I have today. I didn't have the job to afford a a hobby, a project like this, if you would. So uh, the original that I bought is still sitting in a field. Okay. And I was able to upgrade to another one that is thankfully complete because finding the parts, finding something that's not been just wrecked once they're wrecked it is fiberglass yes it's gel coat this is the color it came out of the the mold it's not paint so uh wow. when this is damaged to mash this back is it's like repairing a boat yeah you know it's the same kind of stuff so we're looking at uh next to impossible to match the colors i mean not you know within reason matching colors is i'm not a paint and body guy so mm -hmm. for me it would be incredibly hard to do Okay, but these look very comfy seats. Yeah, you're welcome to sit in if you like. All right, let's do and that. I the coolest, go ahead. What's the coolest thing? The Tell coolest us. thing, <laughs> seat belts. The seat belts. They were an option, but they were included on this one. The GT1, it was an option. It doesn't have any seat belts. So we've got seat belts on this one, guys. We All can right. actually, uh, you know, feel a little safer. Although when you are in it, uh, it's not as easy to come out as you would think. So All right, well, I'm you're not going to fall out. I'm going to give you my camera. Please. And you can hold it as I get in, and I'm going to find a way to close the door. And All right. Open let it me, back up. These are little slide down windows. Oh, that is so nice. Give you a little bit of air while you're in there without right. the air conditioner on. All right, Stephen, you take this, and you All can right. look at the front so we can see this baby in action. How could you not like the wing doors, right? Like, it takes me back to. Um, Back to the future for me. <laughs> Handle heat. Yep. Whoops. Nope. It That's okay. There. It's just like the DeLoreans. Pull it down. All right. And when it gets close to the bottom, it may so, slam down. Just make sure your fingers aren't in the way. All right. Let's close this up. Nice. I love the feel of that. Honestly, I'm absolutely loving the feel of that. You got a little slide window here to give you some air, and of course, lots of nice sun as well. But nah, this is brilliant. I'm gonna get Steven to come in here and um, tell me about the gadgets. So if I was to open this right here. And push up. Steven, why don't you join me in the passenger seat and tell me about um, the gauges you've got. Thank you. I said, I love the sound of that door just smashing. Yes. Sometimes you've got to be careful with cars and classics on how you close it. You know, with the older classic pickups, you've got to give it a good push. Yes. And the newer models, don't smash my door. Exactly. This one does it for you. The normally, and, and the heavier the clunk, I mean, you think quality on the older vehicles anyway, because we want to hear that solid yep. shut that they'll, they, you know, nothing new has these days. So. Exactly. All right. So talk me through it. First of all, I have a question. Why is there two here? Okay, so the parking brake on is still in here. So mm -hmm. on, the, on the Volkswagen, of course, you move over to the driver's side, push down and back for reverse. This has the reverse lockout. So you pull up on that to go back to reverse. Is that the old style H? Mm, kind of, yeah. I mean, it's still a, it's a four speed with a push down reverse, but this has the pull up for the lockout. And this is like a, what, it's a scat shifter. I think uh, one of my other cars has the Hurst. I think the Hurst was an option on this one. Uh, that's one of the only things that I kind of wish it had, but okay. that's okay because it works well. It blends in nicely and it functions fantastically. Nice. And it's got that um, luxurious feel of those high-end cars with the wood and the leather. Yes. Yes. Everything's padded. The dash, the headliner, everything is still very padded. supple. After all these years, it's still... Is still together. So. Very cool. And you got all your gauges here. Correct. And you actually have got the radio here on this side. Correct. Isn't that interesting? 
Well, uh, some kit, and again, this is a kit, so you kind of build it how you want to. There's instructions, but you have many options. A lot of a lot of people put them on the glove box door rather yes. than having a glove box. It doesn't. La it's got a magnet, and there's probably junk in there. The, the lock to take the wheel off, but it does have a glove box, and um, the radio is put on the driver's side, which is fine. It's easy to get to. But it is, yeah. When when the steering wheel is dead on straight, you can't see for the uh, for the bar there. So, okay. But that's okay. I mean, it's a small price to pay for a radio that works. Stephen, how do you feel when you're driving this? Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I bet you would. Love it. <laughs> it's, always, uh, it's always a blast to drive. The windshield, like I said, is a very rare bird on these. It's got the old double wiper still from the 90s, which is cool. I don't even know if, I guess you can still buy those. I don't know. Oh, they, wow. were, they were a big thing when I was in high school or whatever. So, uh, We've got those. Of course, we've got the washer and the wiper, All hazard buttons, lights. Yeah. yeah, we've got everything. I did upgrade the uh, the tail lights to LED light bulbs, um, and I've got the ones that flash. So when I put on the brakes, they flash. I think it's five or six times than yep. say on solid, nice. which required upgrading the flasher to a LED friendly electronic flasher, so that they do function correctly. But um, gas gauge, charging. Uh, oil pressure everything works as it sits right now it's got 2100 miles on the odometer nice um and for the life of me i can't remember how much it had when i got it but it's gonna be i don't i've probably put half the miles on it myself well you love it I you've love been it. out here you're shining it you're cleaning it it puts a smile on your face every it time does. you drive it and does. draws people in that's it what does. it's all about thank you so much Stephen. thank you very much This is pretty neat. I'm not that versed in my Volkswagens, but it definitely looks 70s. David, go. how are you today? Doing all right. <laughs> what have you got? Uh, it's a 1973 Beetle, and then the camper behind it's a 1974 model. This is towing a camper? Yes. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Yes. The all camper right. goes with... <laughs> For a man who doesn't want to have, be on camera, look at him. <laughs> I'll catch you later. <laughs> At home, the guy who puts on the show, he great guy. David, you've got a Beetle, 1973, and it's towing a camper as well. It's not just any small camper. That looks like a pretty nice camper. Yes. It's Pretty nice. She's got the original canvas from 1974. Okay, we're gonna have a look at that too. But first, let's have a look at your beetle. Tell me about it. How long have you had it for starters? Had it for about 10 years. Okay. Did start working working on it to about four and a half, five years ago. So five years ago, you were driving it around in its original no. state, or wasn't driving it all. Didn't have an engine. Didn't have an engine. So it was an absolute project. Yes. Okay. You've painted it. Yes. What else have you done? Uh, I put an engine in it. It's a 1776 cc engine, and then I had to put a transmission, a transaxle in it. It's a Pro Street Ranco transaxle. Okay. So it's built for this car. So it'll do interstate speeds just fine. Um, I did all the body work myself. Um, the paint job on it is actually I got the paint from a place called it's Roth Metal Flow. Okay. So they have what they call. Sorry, David. Let me give you a mic because Jay is on the radio and he's getting a bit loud. Here it is. <laughs> All right, David, so five years ago, you got this, the Beetle, and you did all the bodywork yes. and the paint yourself. Yes. yes. That's a lot. Yes, it is. That's it a was lot. A, it was a long time, but well worth it in the end. The paint is actually done with Rattle Cancer spray paint. In okay. A can. Um, it's, I got it from Roth Metal Flake, so it's got Metal Flake in the paint. I wish it was sunny today and you could really see it pop, but it's got Metal Flake in it where it would really just shine and sparkle yes. once the sunlight hits it. Okay, I can imagine. But I love that you've customized this. Now yes. tell me, in 1973, did they have the four headlights? No, they did not. So no. when I got the car, it had what they call both the wide eye and the bug eye kit here on the front. Okay. So the wide eye is the headlights out here in the fenders, and the bug eye is right here in the center. Yep. So my best guess is they probably messed something up 
decide to put other stuff in. And I just had these covered up with a piece, flat piece of sheet metal. Okay. So instead of, for me, replacing that nose or replacing fenders, I had random headlight buckets sitting there. So I just put them in there as a, as a laugh. Yep. But it I works. End, I end up loving it. It works. So. Wow, that is pretty cool. And you've got studs here as well. Yes. We always love it when things yeah. get uh, personalized like yeah. this. This hood here is from a 1964 model Beetle. Okay. The very end of it was rusted out pretty bad um, because I just ended up cutting it and making it fit. Mm -hmm. And what about the bar up front here? What's, what are we using this for? Um, it's just a little bumper. It came with the car whenever I got it. Okay, and it looks cool. Yeah. It looks cool. It doesn't look like your ordinary Beetle, and that's what it's about. I am loving your wheels, though. Yes. You've got different Those size were, wheels. Yeah. Um, they came on the car whenever I got it. Okay. So I'm not, I think, to my knowledge, they were custom made by somebody. Yeah. Um, because I've got some issues with the tire going flat because of an old weld. But it's well, nothing real major. That's the beauty of project cars, isn't it? Yes. You never know what you're going to get. Yes. But hey, great work on the paintwork on the side here as well. So you. you did that? Yes, I did every bit of it. You did some tape work? Mm -hmm. Tape work and paint everything. Nice. It's got a roll ca It's got a six point roll cage in it. Oh, look. Even the dash here has got the yellow metal flake nice. on it. Nice. Nice and comfy seats. Oh, yes, they are. They definitely weren't the seats in 73. No. <laughs> no, and then another reason I wanted to keep it like looking as old as possible, it came with these old bubble windows right here. Okay. So these are originally from the 70s. Right here, you don't see these. So that was pretty much what I based the car off of was these windows. It's got such a different look to it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And what about the back here? Okay, so these louvers came with the car too. They're from the 70s. Um, originally, I wasn't going to put those on. And then I, before I had the car painted and had all the body work done, I put them on just to see what it looked like for a show. Mm -hmm. Ended up falling in love with it. So I ended up keeping it. Um, I got these. These are old, new stock here. These here. Um, ended up getting the rear bumper from... Uh, Oh, I can't remember the name of the place, but I ended up having to put the trailer hitch in. I ended up building that, that part myself, putting it in to be able to pull the camper around. Exactly, but it's not just that bumper that pulls the camper, of course. Your engine, how powerful is that? Um, I haven't had it on a dyno or anything, mm -hmm. um, but from my knowledge, I think it's supposed to be putting out around 80 horsepower. Um, Which I always say is a fair bit for these size cars. Yes. Um, but like I said, I haven't put on a dyno. It's actually tuned down because it's running a single barrel stock carburetor, mm -hmm. it's like a 1600. But it's still plenty enough power for this. For this, 100%. Yes. And also your awesome camper back here. Yep. And it's painted to match the car. <laughs> You've got so much room in here. I mean, the sides are coming out as well. Maybe we'll go around the other side. Yeah. And this is the original canvas. Original canvas from the 70s. Yes. Right, right. And it's got a little door as well. Yes. <laughs> means pop your head in there real quick. This is massive. Yes. This is massive. And obviously when you're driving, the sides go inside yes. and it gets all tucked back in. Okay, now you've got a Beetle, but I heard your dad's got one and so does your mum. Well, technically that's his and hers. Okay. So So why the love for Volkswagens? He got me into it. My dad. He got you into it. Yes. Okay. He's always liked them and all that growing up they had, my grandfather had a drugstore that he owned and that was their delivery vehicle. Nice. So he, he's had, they had one there, he's always loved them. And, and have you worked on other cars besides the Beatles? Yes, I'm actually a diesel mechanic. You're a diesel mechanic. So, okay, it gets better, ladies and gentlemen. So, I, my background is more farm and construction equipment. Um, I'm actually a high school automotive teacher. Okay, I teach nice. At David Crockett High School. Okay. In Jonesboro. Okay. So, I do that. 
and then this here's just a hobby of mine. I absolutely love that, David, because you're not the first automotive teacher that I have met. <laughs> And I find that so neat to find you guys out there who are teaching kids because, like we always say, this has to continue, the car culture needs to continue, and what better way than to teach the younger generation how to get their hands dirty in a safe place because you don't want them out experimenting on their own when it comes to cars. Now, as a diesel mechanic, what's it like working on the Beatles compared to some of the other cars? Well, for me, I've worked on everything from small engines all the way up to construction equipment. So, for me, it's no different. <laughs> There's no different. No. Is it easier? Is it harder? These are a little bit easier. These are easier. To me, it's no big deal. No big deal. Thank you so much. Appreciate <laughs> Thank it. You. Thank you. Right. Loving the groovy <laughs> camper here. Oh, wow. And it's all been hand painted. It looks hand painted. So I'm going to have a chat with Jessica and Erin, right? How are you two today? Hey, good. How good. How are you? Good. Are you? Good. good. Hey, Charlie. How are you going? Back over here. Back. <laughs> um, okay. You're bottle feeding this cute little kid and Smokey. I really wouldn't do it for the camera because he just started. <laughs> So if we didn't, that's uh, all we'd have to hear. It is so cute. I was just filming uh, this on for my Facebook. It is so cute. Look at it, it's four weeks old. We're gonna get to the car in a minute, people, but this is this has to be seen. Boogers in his eyes, he's he's trying. We're trying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he's a little rough. Look at the hand. Oh my goodness. Love it. Okay. I've been distracted enough by the kitchen. <laughs> Jessica, what do you have? What year is this? It's a 1970 Volkswagen <laughs> Westphalia. Uh, it's, it used to be a sunroof bus. It used to be a sunroof bus. We converted it to Westphalia ourselves. Nice. We painted it ourselves. I roll painted the green on with a roller and I spray painted this here. And then we on, took man. a Sharpie and painted all of it with a Sharpie. And then we took spray cans and we sprayed them in a little cup and we all of it this is not accurate to a real uh piano if you didn't know couldn't couldn't notice it it's not accurate uh, that's about it we had a lot of fun with it we did have a lot of fun tried so to find as much old westphalia uh interior as we could to get back in it we did the ceiling and all that and it's will lived in at the moment and how long ago did you get the 1970 camper about 15 years ago 15 years ago uh, maybe a little longer and we've used it we had it for many years as just a sunroof bus okay and we really enjoyed it and it's been through many different faces we had it pink one time with flamingo stuff and then it had a little short camper top after this and then we finally decided to go and and go full on westy with it nice really enjoy it and i'm guessing you guys like to camp a lot as much as we can <laughs> <laughs> so were you looking for a Volkswagen camper 15 years ago or? Yes, no, it was just like another bus then. And okay. So now we just, we, I, I had been wanting a Westy and so we decided to finally go do the top one. And you like your Volkswagens, Charlie's telling me. You do? Okay, tell me about that. Where does that passion come from and why? Uh, it comes from the 1969 Disney film filmed in Buena Vista, California, Herbie the Love Herbie, Bug. Herbie, yep. That's where it came from. <laughs> yep, and my papa and daddy and they had an old Volkswagen I used to play in and here we are. We just all the way here. That's it. That's it. Well, this is an awesome show and you guys have got a great setup. The whole family here. You've got food, you've got wood fire happening as well. It's great, isn't it? Oh, it yes. is. Yeah. Yep. We've been coming Relaxing. here for a long time. Long time. Love Thank the you. artwork that you've done. You've really personalized it. Thank you. And I'm guessing Charlie's going to have a say when he gets older in what's going to happen to the van, right? <laughs> Maybe so. He, Maybe. he might have his own. <laughs> he might have his own. Thank yeah. you so much, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, let's have a look at a 1949 bug. And not just any bug. Now, we were here earlier and we saw the birthday celebrations or surprise birthday celebrations. And then this car is being stolen. I'm hearing so many different things. I have to come to the source. Oops. Ralph, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, for starters, happy birthday. Thank you. What a nice way to celebrate I amongst absolutely. all your family and friends. It was a good birthday. You had some cake. But you also found out today that your car was stolen. Yep. My best friend stole my car. However, I did not know. He hauls it six hours to this six show. Six hours. Six hours. Uh, details it out 100%. Runs out of gas because he wasn't paying attention to his vehicle. He's so excited. Wow. Meets okay. wonderful friends along the way. Everybody, meet the thief. <laughs> meet Mike. The thief. That's me. Welcome to Rana's Radar. So it's such a pleasure to meet you. You've gone through so much just to bring 
Ralph's car here. Yeah. We had all kinds of ordeals at his house. Yep. He kept parking other cars on the way, and different things happened. And then coming here, like you said, I ran out of gas. It's, it's been quite a weekend. It's been quite a weekend. Well, before we get into that, you know, I love finding out stories, you know, about friendships. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. How long have you guys been friends for? We were just talking about that a while ago. 29 years. 29 yeah, years. We met by, he came to my shop and he was building a bug for his son before he turned 16. Wow. We did as we did to this car. We took many pieces, chopped up pieces and made his son a car. And it's just wow. been a family we're, we're in situation ever since. Love that. Absolutely love that. For so many years. Now, the 49, you guys built this one together as well? Yes, it was a 65 bug convertible. Uh, we had seen original Peb Mueller. They only made 696 uh, before the factory burnt, and Mike and I decided we wanted to make one. So, so you made this from the ground up? This car is made from the ground up, yes ma'am. Okay, so. wow, that is awesome. All right, I'm going to get you to hold this. Okay. So that way you've got the mic close up. Now, building a car from the ground up, and that too, a classic, what did you have to work with? It was a lot of rough. Rotted up car that <laughs> yep. we took parts, added new pieces, and started cutting on the car. He was a little afraid of cutting it, and I, so I started cutting on it. And, and, and ideas you, just kept coming to our head. And, the ideas just kept coming. I'm guessing you've done this period, correct? Period, very correct. close. Yes. Very close. Mm -hmm. And how were you able to do that? Pictures. Uh, pictures, yeah, looking pictures. at pictures. Back then was magazines. There yeah. was no internet. Basically, we started. Yeah. The car was completed in 06. So wow. It's been on the road, lives on the dirt road, rides on the dirt road. Gets it uh, driven pretty regularly. It looks amazing. Ralph, tell me about the interiors. Uh, the interior, that's a 51 whip steering wheel. The dash is out of a 29 Model A Ford. Uh, the seats are a 81 Dodge Colt. Uh, custom cover. Custom cover. Just lots of love and attire. Well, it looks luxurious. I love it. It's very padded, padded as well. And you've got the mechanical. Yes, ma'am. Very nice. It's all mechanical. You have to release it and set it down yourself. And who decided on the paint job? The uh, paint colors. I guess I would say Mike. I think I told him to do it this color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a German it's a scheme. Heavy or color it just fits the color mm -hmm. it does it really does it makes it stand out and it's very german yes ma'am it's very german and why do you guys love the volkswagen so much simplicity grew up with it that was my first car okay i've had six or eight of them i have two right okay. now so I, just, I like working on playing with them, and you make great friends. Yep. Absolutely <laughs> love do. that. You too. Absolutely love that. Now, let's go back because the thing that interests me the most, and I love the car, the 49, built from the ground up. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work right there. Coming back to your birthday. Okay. <laughs> you went ahead and you stole the car, and you did some work on it. What did you do? I took it home, detailed it up, and there was some broken pieces and chips in the paint, and I fixed all that. Wow, and you had no idea that your car was missing? Not at all, no ma'am. But I have 13 and it was, in a, <laughs> it was in a shed in the backyard and we had yeah. people bringing gravels and so I was concentrating on the gravels yeah. and just, there's no reason to go unlock a shed to see if the car's still in there from the winter because it no. had no way to get out. You don't, but coming over here, it was a bit of a struggle because you were still trying to hide it from Ralph, I was talking. Yeah, and I bought my clothes trailer. He actually thought my 58 bug Trailer okay. Until he walked around the corner here today and saw this. And what was your reaction? It's like somebody built a hub, and then I looked again. I seen my license plate, the forty-nine yeah. license plate, and I'm like, oh my god. What is this doing then, here? What is this doing here? And then it just all exploded wow. from there. Wow. And that's the greatest thing about Volkswagen is you can drop a wallet out here, and yeah. the people are so family-oriented and honest, they would take it to the announcers. It's it's not the rest of the world. That's the it's exact vibe awesome. that I am getting. That's why I'm enjoying myself so much here with this community. It's been really awesome. It's been, it's been absolutely awesome. Nice to meet you both. Nice Here to meet you. With Thank your you. Family and good friends. And that's my wife. She was a big part of all of it. Oh, come on. <laughs> she was my co conspirator. 
There always had to be one co-conspirator because how could he have taken a car without him knowing you had to be involved? I did. <laughs> a lot. She's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I swiped all the keys and laid them out for him and told him where the vehicle was at at all times during the week when somebody likes to move them around. <laughs> Wow, that is awesome. I absolutely love it. I love the whole atmosphere and vibe that you guys have here going on. It's a birthday you are never going to forget. And you have to show the trunk. It's the show great. Me the trunk. The, the trunk is a, the engine lid. That's what makes a heavy one. Okay, so okay, you see the difference different. in yes. the scallops compared to that. So that is the. It's entirely metal. It's all metal. Mike made it. There is no fiberglass. That's the. That is what distinguishes a heavy one. And what was the engines that they had? Uh, back then they had a 25 horsepower Astra engine. Okay. So just a lot smaller than the normal bug. But and there was still only about 600 of these made? 696. Wow. And the engine's in the back as, as a bug is. As a bug is. Mm -hmm. But it still looks very different. Yes, ma'am. Even, even back here it looks different. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks you took a hood, a yeah, front hood, and, and put it on the back. Hood. But it's not. And it's not. No, it's... And it's got the vents back here. It's a bit like the Porsches. They have their vents up there. That's correct. Well. Yep. Yeah. You can take a picture of yourself in that hubcap. 